Tech Talks. We're back, 2 o'clock rock. You're going to give it Friday to Think Tech Tech Talks. And we have a special guest who has been with Think Tech for a long time, way back in the radio days, too. Uh, that's uh, Dr. Hans Kroc. He's an engine, energy engineer, and he was, uh, what, the, the chair or the dean of the uh, energy engineering department and... Ocean engineering. Ocean engineering department uh, back in, uh, whoa, way back when, well, at UH. Yeah, way uh, since 1980, I've been uh, with that department, yeah. And you're associated with Al Yi, another engineer. Yes. And you guys have worked together on various projects over the years, yeah? Yes, yes, we have. Uh, uh, and uh, that area is mainly ha having to do with OTAC, ocean thermal energy conversion. And of course, in the uh, uh, Department of Ocean and Resources Engineering, uh, I, I was the one that added resources to the title <laughs> and, and included OTEC as part of the curriculum. <laughs> so uh, I believe uh, this was the only academic program in the United States that had OTEC. Uh, ocean thermal energy conversion. Other countries, Japan has a has a, some huh? uh, some academic program, and um, it's in SOAS then. Uh, yes, it's in SOAS, and and I believe Taiwan and and uh, and um, uh, Korea, South Korea have programs in, uh, that include OTEC. Both of the, those are headed up by doctoral graduates of our department, mm -hmm. my, my students. Is that actually. right? Yeah. yeah. You cover the whole Pacific, all yeah. the world. Yeah. You guys have designed projects for every place, really. Uh, yeah, well, Al Yi, of course, is a uh, you know, world famous uh, structural engineer, expert in concrete uh, uh, structures, and especially uh, marine uh, structures, which require a different mix of uh, concrete to, to survive. That's one of the reasons we're, we got together in both an OTEC and these other things like uh, the natatorium, which we're going uh, what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, let's talk about yeah. that. So it was in yeah. the paper yesterday in the Star Advertiser. There you were. I, gee, I think it was the front page, huh? No, it was the, the front section. page of the of the yeah, the, uh, the business business section. section yeah. yeah, and it was about a, a new design that you guys had uh, devised mm -hmm. um, with some encouragement from the National Trust for Historic Preservation. Uh, for the uh, natatorium, a really important um, national monument here in Hawaii. Can you tell us about uh, the design and, and how it got to the level of, uh, of, of news? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as most everybody knows, uh, uh, the natatorium has, uh, has been in the, on, on the possibility of redesign for, I believe, some 35 years. And uh, we really haven't achieved it yet. I mean, we've uh, gone through several iterations of alternatives, uh, but uh, uh, it, it hasn't happened. Uh, so, uh, uh, and it's at a stage right now where some alternatives are being uh, considered uh, 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 through, uh, as alternatives to be covered by an environmental impact statement. And uh, when the national uh, uh, people came by, they, uh, none of those really satisfied them, and they had heard about uh, uh, Ali and myself uh, having some expertise in this area, so we had a series of meetings, and uh, I basically resurrected a, a design that I had uh, 20 years ago with uh, some graduate uh, students. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. An uh, academic design then, yeah? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. it was, and we experimented on it and whatnot. And in any case, uh -huh. uh, uh, that wasn't accepted at the time because they wanted to go with something that, uh, to my mind, wouldn't work. Nevertheless, uh, it came up again uh, now with the, with the National uh, Historic uh, And they b they're backing this design? Uh, they are, uh, and uh, they're uh, uh, pushing something here uh, specifically b uh, because they're, they're interested in keeping a World War I memorial active, especially on the 100th anniversary of World War I, uh, 
you know, the Armistice Day. Yeah, we can't tear uh, down a, a, a monument like this uh, uh, I believe on an anniversary to, that's so today, important. Today is Armistice Day, isn't it? Uh, November 11th. Uh, Veterans Day, Armistice yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so it's an important discussion for us to have today, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a monument to the, the uh, soldiers and sailors who had died in uh, World War I. Yes, uh, and Hawaii, the Hawaii contingent, as I understand it, uh, of course that was before either one of our times, <laughs> uh, uh, was, uh, was uh, large for the population. In fact, uh, the, when they sent the contingent of uh, um, basically uh, volunteers uh, to, uh, to the war, First World War, it was, uh, I believe, it was uh, the largest one of any of the states for the population of, of Hawaii at the time. And remember, at that time, Hawaii wasn't a state yet. You yes, know. right. It was just yeah. barely a territory. Yep. And World War One was a real meat grinder. I bet the casualty mm -hmm. rate was very high. Very, very, uh, I mean, unsurpassed even now, you know, in terms of uh, uh, per battle, I mean, you know, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, huge amounts of history and uh, changed change the world. Um, and I, I'm somewhat uh, involved, I mean, my background is somewhat involved in that because I was born in Poland, incidentally. And prior to w the end of World War One, Poland didn't exist for 140 years, <laughs> if you remember. Yeah. And only as a result of uh, the uh, what, the disappearance of the three empires, uh, the Russians, the uh, Austrians, and, and the Prussians, Poland suddenly popped up again and uh, became an independent country until World War II. <laughs> when all that changed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, nevertheless, it's again an independent yes, country, and uh, that was the start of it. Yeah. So, so here, the, the powers that were at the time, the end of World War I, um, they decided that to build this monument to the fallen soldiers and sailors. Uh, and it was an unusual design at the time. It was advanced at the time. Uh, well, it, it was unusual in a couple of ways. Uh, one, uh, it was a, a trend that was... Uh, uh, also covered in other monuments in, in the U.S., for instance, Soldier's Field, you know, the ba yeah. baseball park. Yeah. Uh, 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 it was a trend to have a useful monument, not just a statue of somebody on a horse, you know, yeah. Yeah. but actually you know, to have some use out of it. And yeah. this was a pool for swimming. And... Yeah. Uh, and that's useful, yeah, you know? yeah. and and so uh, uh, it was uh, a national um, um, uh, monument that uh, everybody knew about. Yeah. Uh, and of course, oh, really, uh, I mean, on the mainland, too. on the mainland, yeah, yeah. you know, it was uh, advertised. I mean, you know, written Over about. Side, yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, so it was an important thing from that standpoint, and of course. All of Hawaii knows that uh, uh, many people learned to swim there, do Kanamoku. Do Kanamoku, uh, that's where he's, he did his swimming. Right? Exactly, and, and what Tarzan, uh, you know, <laughs> John <laughs> Weissmuller and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and lo lots of associations. And, uh, uh, and uh, it uh, basically fell into decay. Now, it was one of, one of um, only, well, you didn't find a lot of salt water swimming pools no. in those days. I, I, I'm uh, not sure how many there were, but uh, you could probably count them in one hand or yeah. even less. And uh, uh, um, so, I, and it was actually built with some of that in mind because it was built to the dimension of an of a Olympic size uh, pool, you know, 100, 100 meters long. And uh, uh, so they set some records in there. But of course, uh, finally, uh, the records are kept separately for saltwater pool and freshwater yeah. because you float in saltwater yeah, a little better. Yeah, it's not the same. So right. it's not the same, yeah. Well, I can see Waikiki at the time 
Waikiki with Kapiolani Park. There were horse races uh, around that time in Kapiolani Park. Yeah. The uh, ladies would come out with their finery on a Sunday, and everybody would attend uh, the, these great horse race type events. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, the kids were surfing. Everybody was surfing in those days. It was, I guess, just as popular, if not more popular. And all this within a few feet of the natatorium. Yeah. So it was part of a complex mm -hmm. of, um, of sport. Yeah. and athletic activity right there. Yeah. It was probably a great center, drew a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I understand that uh, the, uh, the local kids came from school and, you know, considered it, uh, I mean, it was free, so, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it was a safe place to learn to swim. You weren't exposed to, uh, you know, the wave, uh, you know, although, of course, we all swim in the waves, but, uh, it was it was a good place to learn you know so let's talk about the original design mm -hmm. because this 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 was unprecedented in so many ways mm -hmm. uh, how did they want to uh, uh, we have pictures let's look at some pictures okay. okay there's a picture of the is that a picture of it as it was built or as yeah. it is now no no that's as it was originally built yeah mm -hmm. and uh, you can see that it's relatively enclosed and here I believe, yeah. You can't see the color in this case, I don't think. But uh, this is what the present situation is. I mean, uh, the original design really hasn't changed in terms of its gross outline. And uh, the area around uh, the swimming pool there uh, is is now blocked off because it is unsafe. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, the concrete has uh, deteriorated and there are holes all over the place and uh, the water is in poor quality uh, there and uh, some of the original assumptions about the design didn't, uh, uh, didn't uh, work out. How could know. the water be of co poor quality? What's going on to make it of poor quality? Yeah, there, there are two things that make it uh, poor quality. And uh, one has to do with uh, the, uh, the, the bottom sand, the bottom sediment in there. And the other one has to do with uh, the rate of exchange of water. So the, inside the, and outside, uh, so it the, goes stagnant inside. It, yeah, it's a poor exchange rate because originally uh, there were uh, uh, there were pukas on the side walls over here, uh, which uh, uh, assumed that uh, uh, there was uh, a current that would push the water through but, there. But that doesn't really happen. It does doesn't it? really happen. And in any case, those pukas are fairly small. Mm -hmm. There were four on each side. And the pukas on the uh, sort of downstream side, or, uh, here by Kamana Beach, uh, became filled with sand because before the Natatorium was built there, there was no Kaibmana beach. Uh -huh. <laughs> and sand changes position all the time. Well, it, it changes, but it accumulates mm -hmm. um, when you have a, a barrier uh, sure. uh, uh, like the sidewall of the... Uh, 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 so it accumulates and now we have a beach and we have people that enjoy the beach and want the beach to stay there. So, <laughs> so the alternative of tearing down the Natatorium completely is, is not a good alternative. In other words, going back to the original shoreline condition because the beach is there and so people don't mm. want, to want the thing to be torn down. So that's one of the alternatives that's... Well, but, um, but what yeah. it's in the national, it's in the National Trust for uh, preserve monuments. Uh, can it be torn down? It's a national monument. Uh, there, you have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops if you want to do that, and uh, it would be difficult. Mm -hmm. And like I say, especially uh, on the 100th anniversary of First World War, excuse me. Well, on that, we're going to take a um, short break. Uh, we have Hans Krack, uh, energy engineer, talking about his plan with Al Yi for the redevelopment of the Natatorium. We'll be right back. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday, here on Think Tech Hawaii. Hey, everybody. My name is David Chang, and I'm the new host of a new show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you secrets 
on giving yourself the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests and great mentors of mine from the political, military, business, nonprofit, you name it. So it's something for everybody. Okay, we're back. We're, we're live with uh, Think Tech Tech Talks with Hans Kroc, an energy engineer who spent, what, many decades uh, in the engineering, in the, in the marine, oh, the ocean, ocean engineering, engineering department, uh, part, uh, par, uh, department in the uh, UH. Hi. And uh, he and his colleague uh, Al Yi devised a new plan to save the natatorium. And it was in the newspaper, the Star Advertiser, yesterday, and other media too, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're here to go into some detail today. So we have some more slides, and I'm hoping we can show them, uh, yeah. and Hans can describe yeah. what we see here. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I want to show the, uh, right now the existing walls, the outer wall and the, uh, and the side walls. And uh, the thing to note here is that these walls are uh, 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 solid and don't allow waves to come through, the wave break uh, through there. And, uh, uh, and uh, the bottom is, is sand. So we talked a little bit uh, previously about the uh, lack of exchange of water. And so the idea is, is to uh, is, uh, allow the waves to push some water through here. That's uh, okay. the idea that I have. And the know. lack of the exchange of water means that it's, uh, it's stagnant yeah, it, it, and it's it, not healthy. It's right. It, it, uh, it, the water stays in there long enough to grow uh, uh, phytoplankton and they accumulate in there and they cause the water to be cloudy. And additionally, they change the pH, which is the amount of acid that's, uh, that, that's in the water. And that's significant because of the sand on the bottom, which in Hawaii, it comes from coral, which is chemically calcium carbonate. And if you go to acidic conditions because of the accumulation of organic material, that sand tends to dissolve. And so you get finer and finer particles, and they come into the water and becomes turbid. And so oh, that's okay. the condition. Well, it's not clear water anymore. No, and it won't be clear yeah. unless you uh, Exchange. Uh, uh, do two things. One, uh, uh, get rid of the sand you know, to, uh, either by replacing it with some sand that doesn't dissolve or uh, with, a, with, a, uh, with a solid bottom, yeah, 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 yeah. Or, uh, another material, not calcium carbonate. So now what you're talking about is to solve the problems uh, that you have found with yep. this lack of exchange, but that would be as part of a larger project to rehabilitate Yes. Uh, you know, the entire natatorium, yeah. uh, all of the structures and infrastructure around to make it a workable, you know, uh, uh, athletic athletic uh, stadium yeah. as it was. Yeah, it makes no sense to just say, oh, this thing's deteriorating, but let's just replace the, uh, the uh, walls with new walls and not solve the problems that made it uh, uh, usable, uh, right. unusable to begin right. with. And so that's that, the difference here. In the past, yes. we have talked about just rebuilding it right. with the same system, but that's, that's a waste. Yeah. If you're going to rebuild it, you want to improve it, and you want to yeah. deal with these problems you've that's identified. Right. right. Okay. That's so what's clearly. your system? Well, uh, I, I want to first of all say that uh, one of the uh, objections to uh, opening uh, to uh, the present system is that uh, the uh, health department has come up with uh, rules about pools, so pool regulations, and uh, that uh, uh, that is applicable to saltwater pools, uh, but not applicable to areas that are uh, freely exchanging with the ocean. Mm. That, and so, uh, in, in solving this problem. We want to make the conditions so that uh, this doesn't uh, meet the definition of a, of a pool, according to the health department. So uh, there are other examples uh, in Hawaii where you have uh, uh, areas where you, in fact, 
uh, have exchange that's driven by waves, mm -hmm. and you have a pool, and the health department doesn't apply saltwater pool rules mm -hmm. to this. That's Magic Island. That's We're Magic Island now. right now, and uh, uh, the, uh, the water is pushed through the gaps uh, uh, there, and those, those are waves. Uh, that's one way to uh, uh, use wave energy. Mm -hmm. And the water inside is not terribly turbid. People use it, and they do a lot of swimming and whatnot mm -hmm, in there. Mm -hmm. And the health department doesn't get uh, you know, too exercised <laughs> about, uh, about that. Okay. Uh, similarly, uh, there's, uh, there's the Kuhio Beach right in Waikiki, very close to the auditorium, uh -huh. where in that case, there's an outer wall that's relatively low, and the waves break over that and push water into uh, the, that area. And again, the pool rules by the health department don't, ap uh, don't apply here, although ostensibly you've got walls and you've got people uh, swimming and you, uh, 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 you, uh, it's very similar so to it's, that. It's uh, very uh, similar uh, and, and yeah. you can swim a lot easier yeah. in a structure like that. Yes, exactly. And you're, you're, uh, you don't have, uh, uh, you have exchange. You don't have uh, uh, static uh, water conditions. Mm -hmm. And the next one, in the Coralina uh, lagoons, these are completely artificial. They, they weren't, nothing was there before. Mm -hmm. And this was dredged out. Uh, and uh, again, although it's not immediately obvious, this is again wave-driven exchange. And that is, uh, each one of these uh, uh, lagoons has, uh, has a configuration on its mouth where the waves break uh, on the two outer channels, push water in, and the outflow goes through the center channel, which is deeper. Oh. Uh, so, so the waves, uh, so it comes through and goes out, and again, uh, uh, there's a swimming areas. People uh, uh, recreate in there, and uh, and the health department doesn't apply salt water. That's very rules. clever. So it, it's you use the depths of the in and the out to con to to achieve the exchange. Well, uh, uh, right. Uh, 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 it, it waves uh, are a source of energy, uh, water movement, right, and. Uh, uh, normally, people don't really realize that, but out in the ocean, when you don't have breaking waves, the water doesn't move forward, it just moves in a circle. Mm -hmm. And only until you break the wave, or until you uh, uh, allow a w movement only in one direction, do you actually get water movement. You know, so water in a breaking wave washes up on the shore, that's uh -huh, water uh -huh. movement, right? Uh, and so, uh, by cleverly designing something that allows you to take advantage of the energy, which is the movement of water, uh, in, in, in uh, a design, you can then uh, design the thing to uh, exchange water. You know, and that's what uh, I've done. I've come up with this little thing, although. You know, if somebody says, oh, we don't want that, we can use any of these other methods right. here. You know, uh, uh, it's the same thing. It's, you know? it's the same thing. And yeah. the, the essential thing is you use the energy of the water itself. Of the waves. The waves to uh, achieve the exchange. Right. And then you can avoid stagnant water and have a flow in and out. Right. And that's, that's the essence of the thing. So in one case, in that case, you solve the problem with the stagnant water. In the other case, you first of all uh, 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 pull out the uh, the sand, the calcium carbonate. You suck that out, mm -hmm. and then replace it in, in my design anyway mm -hmm. uh, with uh, gravel. First of all, not calcium carbonate, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but gravel, and then shape it however you want it, or put whatever depth you want in the pool. Mm -hmm. And then put. So that's uh, not hard. Uh, this is not hard to do. That. No, it, it's what you would do in any case. Yeah. And 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 then you put uh, uh, slabs of uh, concrete. They don't have to be a contiguous thing, but slabs of concrete to shape the bottom and basically uh, cover up any sand that's further down, so that uh, you don't have 
it's sand dissolving and, and causing turbidity and the thing. I don't so, know if we have a slide of that, uh, but uh, that's the... Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, there it is. No, that's, that's, really that's the existing condition, oh, that's existing that, condition. that we're going to improve. Okay. See, uh, it, it identifies a restricted water flow on the outer wall and uh, uh, shows that the deteriorating deck, the concrete and whatnot, uh, is uh, in bad, circula mm -hmm, uh, bad mm -hmm. shape. And it says uh, about the pipe that was originally thought to provide adequate circulation, but doesn't. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then uh, descriptor of the poor water quality, which is due to those two factors, poor circulation and the sand on the bottom. Yeah. And then the solution is, uh, in my mind, uh, is, oh, the next, uh, is the next uh, okay. uh, thing, which now is this, is this is the important one. This was the one in the newspaper yesterday. Right, that, that's uh, right. Uh, this yeah. is going to correct the problems. That's correct. And basically, this outer uh, uh, wall over here is replaced by uh, a, uh, a, a wall. I mean, you're still going to have a wall over there, but basically it's the two rows of chevrons which allows the wave energy to p push in, but not, you know, if you just have a wall, the wave goes to the wall and then reflects back out. This so what's a chevron? A chevron is just a, it's a V-shape of concrete. Right, right. That's And it's it. probably, what, uh, five or six or eight feet deep? Oh, no, it, it's uh, the entire depth of the... Uh, oh, which the, is more than five or six feet. Uh, yeah, it's not much more than that, though. Yeah. And, of course, this is fully tidal, so you have basically two feet of, uh, of range, of the tidal range over here. And the Plus chevrons are pointing um, outward. Uh, they yeah. point out to sea. Yeah, see, see uh, J. <laughs> <laughs> see, if you get the pointy end outward... You, you see, if you look at the chart there, it's on the left-hand side. If you got the pointy you end... the chevrons. Yeah, if you got the pointy end outward, it's like the front of a boat. Yeah. You know, uh, so... If a boat uh, goes sideways to the waves, the wave hits a wall and reflects. If, and they say, oh, man, we're all going to get seasick. <laughs> so you say, oh, we're going to put the pointy end into the waves. And, you know, so it slices through the waves. And yeah. the waves don't break. They just slice it. Come around the Come chevron. around, yeah, 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 the chevron, right. And this is like a valve because it allows the water to come in yeah, but not get yeah, out. That's right. <laughs> you got it. No. Okay, and the second row of chevrons actually further diverts the water and, and uh, tells it, uh, you know, if you want to come back out, all you're going to see is a trap. You can't <laughs> get out anymore, you know. And, and then uh, in, uh, further inside over there, you've got a, a gap of uh, uh, a series of vertical walls yeah. with a gap in between. Yeah. And, uh, and the wave, uh, what remnants of the wave you have, which is going to get all confused by going through all these chevrons, and it's going to hit that wall and try to bounce back and, uh, and sh uh, see the closed ends of the chevrons. And, you know, the turbulence ensues like a breaking wave. And you basically have uh, a rise in water level, which then flows through the gaps in the vertical thing into the pool. And now it's in the pool. And, uh, and it's fresh. And, and it's, 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 it's new. The ocean. Yeah, it's new there. And the only place it can get out of that pool is through these pukas here uh, on the side walls. You know, so, so it flies so the all the way walls. through. Can we see that chart one on, more time? On the side walls. I uh, see in the here. back, there's arrows there yeah. showing the relief yeah. uh, holes in the back. And, and so the, the side walls are hollow. Uh -huh. So it flows back out and it goes back to the ocean near the front. You see those arrows uh, going out. So it strikes me that um, this is actually pretty close to the original configuration. You're just replacing the one wall and expanding the, the relief holes at the back. Yeah, uh, 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 ostensibly, when you go back to the original thing, yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell the difference because it's still the walls. Uh, you can't really see the chevrons very well because they're below water. Uh -huh. And so there it is, you know. So the National uh, Trust for Preservation they, they is going to like this. Yeah. They are already delighted. They, they've uh, reviewed this and uh, they say, hey, let's do this. That's, that's what that's it is. It's great, Hans. Great creative. And it's what you and uh, Al Yee have been doing for years, working yep. with concrete, marine concrete. Yep. And it's easy to make these things, right? You have a form, you pour it in. Oh, on the, a, yeah. And they just put them out there. Yeah, right. It's uh, 
And in fact, you could even make them the same size as the, as the uh, bottom slabs and, uh, and you know, so just tick a tick a tick a You wouldn't even see them. <laughs> but they would be doing a job creating yeah. the exchange that you need to have. Right. It, uh, and from an engineering standpoint, uh, you're just utilizing uh, nature's energy that's available to you. And it, and anybody knows it's easier to work with nature than it is to fight against it. There you go. It's easier the, to work, but don't fight with Mother Nature. I heard that before. Yeah.